Hey guys, Sean here from Tesla Family. I've had my Tesla solar panels installed now for six months. My 7.56 kilowatt system was installed in late June 2020, and my panels have since powered my home and my Tesla Model 3 through summer and autumn 2020. In this video, I'll be showing my solar production summary for the last six months, June through December 2020. I'll show you details on my six month solar production, my home usage, my solar offset, rainfall and sky cover data impacting production, my SREC creation over the six months, and my total electric cost for six months. I'll compare my solar performance with what Tesla estimated I should see when they sent me my final layout plans back in February 2020, and how much I paid for electricity in the same six month period during 2019 before my panels were installed. All right, let's jump into the data. Let's talk six month solar production. And to start that off here, I have my solar panel layout sent to me by Tesla. And that came to me back in February, 2020, right around the time that I decided to approve my Tesla solar panel order. Now, if you've been watching my videos all along, you'll know that there was a bit of a delay, uh, mainly because of the pandemic. So I didn't actually get my panels installed until June 26th of 2020. I feel like that that timeline probably would have been a much shorter had I not put my own self-imposed delay on the installation. So with this solar panel layout here, you can see I have a south facing array of 20 panels and a smaller west facing array of four panels. That's a total of 24 315 watt panels. I was probably one of the last installations to receive these 315 watt panels before Tesla moved to 340 watt panels. The current option for a medium system size from Tesla is 8.16 kilowatts. My medium system size is 7.56 kilowatts. I want to draw your attention here to the estimated annual production. Tesla estimates that over the course of one year that my system should roughly generate 10,445 kilowatt hours. So let's compare that to, to my first six month solar production data. This is for July through December 2020. I had my system installed on June 26th and I got permission to operate July 3rd, 2020. That was my first full day of solar production. So half of Tesla's solar estimate would be 5,222.5 kilowatt hours. And you can see here for the six month period of July through December, 2020, I generated 4,307 kilowatt hours. And it's not a full six months because I wasn't able to include July 1st and 2nd in this six month total, but let's just for the sake of calculation estimate that I had full solar production about 45 kilowatt hours per day in on July 1st and 2nd. That would bring my total production to 4,397 kilowatt hours, a difference of 825 kilowatt hours short. Now that's a pretty significant difference. That's actually more than my entire production for September 2020. So based on my solar production for July through December, it looks like Tesla's estimate is going to be roughly 1500 kilowatt hours overestimated. Even though that estimate from Tesla is an overestimation, I want to pass along that looking at this right hand impact screen capture from my Tesla app, you can see that over the course of this six month period that my solar was able to offset my energy usage by 97%. So very, very close. I generated 4,307 kilowatt hours of solar and my home used 4,425 kilowatt hours of energy. So I was only short by around 118 kilowatt hours. What that tells me is that my system is appropriately sized, even though Tesla's estimate seems a bit high. And that could be due to a number of factors, including the weather. We have had a very wet period through the entire six months. I'll show you some of the weather data down below. You know, more clouds equals less production. That's definitely one of the big factors. Shading could even come into play as well. Let's run through the numbers here. So I produced 4,307 kilowatt hours of solar in the six month period. My home used 4,425 kilowatt hours. I drew from the grid. These would be during the overnight hours and on cloudy days or when I needed more energy than my solar system could produce when the sun was out, which usually 
only occurs if I'm charging my Model 3 at a full 11 kilowatts using the Tesla wall connector. I drew from the grid 3,133 kilowatt hours, or 3 megawatt hours, and I pushed to the grid 3,015 kilowatt hours. If you compare two grid and home usage, that means that I roughly used around 1,400 kilowatt hours from my solar panels right into my home without even being pushed to the grid. So it's kind of neat that you can use the energy right away. Taking a look at the high-end production possibility, this is using the kilowatt hour rule of thumb. I talk about that more in detail in my July 2020 solar production video. Take a look at that if you want more details on the exact kilowatt hour rule of thumb. But high-end production would be 6,418 kilowatt hours. That would be if every single day was full sunshine right through the six-month period. Low-end production possibility of 3,636 kilowatt hours. It comforts me knowing that my production of 4,307 kilowatt hours fit generally right in between this high-end estimate and low-end estimate. A little bit closer to the low-end estimate, but that again is telling me that my system is appropriately sized and it's healthy and it's functioning well. So for the six-month period, the average production per day, now keeping in mind that I generate a lot more during the middle of the summer than I do in the winter time, average production per day of 24 kilowatt hours. My highest production day was on July 14th where I generated 45 kilowatt hours. Take a look at my July 2020 solar video for more details on my solar production during one of our sunniest months of the year. And my lowest production day was on December 16th where I only generated 400 watt hours. And that was due to a snowstorm moving through. I do have a video on my solar production during that winter snowstorm if you click the link above. Average percent of normal rainfall for the six months, you can see that that we've seen well above normal rainfall, 164% of normal, and average sunrise to sunset sky cover percentage of 59%. So a little bit more cloudy than sunny during the period. Again, that could be a factor of why my solar production over the six-month period is shy of Tesla's estimate. Total lifetime production for the six months, again, would be the 4,307 kilowatt hours. And my total SRECs created a total of four. I get one SREC for every megawatt hour or 1,000 kilowatt hours generated. If you want more information on SRECs, click the link above on my SREC video. At a payout of $70.50 each, that put $280 back in my pocket. My total utility bill costs for six months of energy while having Tesla solar panels was a minuscule $28.86. I'm extremely happy to report that. That's cheaper than most people's cable bill. It's roughly 15 or 16 cents per day. Incredibly cheap. Comparing that utility bill cost for six months with my 2019 utility bill cost for the same period before I went solar, that was $655. That's a difference of more than $620 that I saved by going solar. Now, most people would say, yeah, well, you have to figure in the cost of solar, how long it would take to pay off your solar. Take a look at my video at the link above for a breakdown of what I paid for my Tesla solar panels. All right, guys, thanks for watching the video. If you really enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to Tesla Family Channel here on YouTube. We really appreciate all of our subscribers and everyone who watches our videos. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below, and I'll get back to you soon. Check out all of our other videos as well. Also, follow us on Twitter at Tesla Family Chan. Use my referral code to buy a new Tesla and you will get 1,000 free supercharging miles. Or if you use my referral code to buy Tesla solar roof or solar panels, you'll get a $100 reward after system activation.